What is up everybody, Scratch coming up with another Raid Shadow Legends video, now we got some news regarding the fusion starting tomorrow guys, we are on the test server, we do have access to all the brand new champions coming in the game, so we have 4 new epics, 2 new legendary, one of them being the legendary for the fusion, and then we got a new void legendary champion, which by the way, looks badass, the kill is badass, the epics are pretty badass as well, but before we move over to talk about the champions, let's have a look at how this fusion is going to work because we're going to have a new system for the fusion guys. So literally a couple of minutes ago, we've been pinged in Discord by Banana Jam. Hey fellas, the fusion starts tomorrow and we wanted to shed some light on how it will happen as this time is going to be a bit different. Now, some of you might see this different in a bad way, but some of you might see this different in a good way. Personally, I'm seeing it in a good way and, and I will explain you why in a second. Now, just as usual, you'll need to fuse the legendary champion from epic champions. Although, here comes the unusual part, you'll need to summon the epics from fragments. And just to remind you, the fusion champion is Dwarf Legendary, under Priest Brogni, he's an excellent support champion that will be useful for raiding dungeons and Doom Tower. So I... 100% agree with uh, what she said there, the champion is going to be very, very powerful for a PvE and he might be super powerful for PvP as well. For that, we got to test him. Now, I do have access to these champions for quite a few days. I didn't have the time to try them out yet. Work, work, work. But let's have a quick look at the champion. So for whoever doesn't remember, is not familiar with it, we do have the fusion right here, Under Priest Brogni, right? So these are the, ba the base stats on him, the book requirement. He's going to be a great, great champion. Now, we're not going to focus on talking about him so much because I will be releasing a video on him tomorrow uh, before the fusion gets released or soon after the fusion gets released, guys. So we're going to find out about this champion tomorrow. We're going to see how he performs in the game because rather than just talking about him i already did that in a previous video i want to talk about the rest of the champions and for some of you guys that are not able to finish the fusion what epics you should aim on which of the epics are better overall for progression right so we're talking about the low spenders new players things like this let's kind of have a look at that now this is a very strong champion i do repeat that so you guys are hearing it from me if somebody else tells you it's not a is not a strong champion please ignore it and do consider this fusion if you have the chance so that's one of the champions of course that's in game before we move over to the epics let me show you the new legendary right man i don't know how to tell you but she's about to change clan boss right so raiho bone spear she looks at bad ass she looks amazing super super great design i really really love the design on her right so that's that's where she stands in looks wise then we have four skills one passive we do have an aura as well base that's pretty good 18,000 hp 1.2k attack 1.145 defense 105 speed looks pretty good there but the a1 attacks one enemy places a 15 percent continuous heal buff on the ally with the lowest hp for one turn also places a 7.5 continuous heal buff on all allies with 30 percent hp or less for one turn so a bit of a heal on the A1 is nothing too insane, but it's better than nothing, right? That requires four books right here, guys. Continuous heal on the A1. Now, if you are not ready for it, if you haven't seen something like this before, I'm going to introduce it to you right now. A2. On a three-turn cooldown, fully booked requires five more books. So that brings us up to a total of nine books. Places a stun debuff on a target enemy for one turn as well as a HP burn debuff, a 60% decrease defense debuff, a 25% weaken debuff, a 50% decrease attack debuff, and a 30% decrease crit rate debuff for 2 turns, then attacks the target, lands all the debuffs, attacks the target, stun is not gonna work on clan boss, but defense down, weaken, decrease crit rate, no more crits from the clan boss, Sefini, that's it, over, and HP burn, on one single skill on clan boss this is like breaking the clan boss this is so so strong it opens up the possibilities of building so many different teams with this champion in there just because it brings attack down defense down and weaken on the same skill 
there is no other champion in the game to do that, right? But if that was not enough to convince you that this champion is gonna be amazing for clan boss, let me move over to the A3. That might spice it up a bit. A3. On a 3 turn cooldown, fully booked requires 5 more books, that brings us up to a total of 14 books which I'll gladly pay twice as much if, uh, if I get a champion. Perfect body on a 3 turn cooldown, how I said, removes all debuffs from all allies, then places a block debuffs buff on them for 2 turns. Also heals all allies by 35% of their max HP and by a further 5% for each debuff removed from them. So that means affinity friendly teams, welcome. Void Champion, Block Debuffs and Cleans on the same skill, man. Like, you have Block Debuffs and Cleans, right? On a 3 turn cooldown. Like, and a crazy heal as well. Like, this champion, honestly, it buries the clan boss. Like, honestly, I wish I would get her on my account. I do have her on the test server. I'll be throwing out some nasty clan boss teams with it in the coming week, guys. So stay tuned for it. But amazing, amazing champion. Super hardcore to get. I agree with it. But she is amazing. Then we have the passive. Reflect. When receiving any debuff, instantly transfers them from this champion to the attacker. If she gets poisoned, she transfers that to the boss. If by any chance she's the one getting the stun, she's gonna transfer the stun, I think remove it. She's not gonna be able to stun the clan boss, of course, but I think that debuff will get transferred and lost, right? So basically, auto cleans on this champion if you make her the stun target now i'm not a hundred percent sure about what i just said now because i haven't tested it yet if she's gonna transfer that but as far as we can see will not transfer debuffs that cannot be removed there are not many of those right so the clan boss stun is definitely not uh, one of those things so that should be removed then we have the aura increases ally attack infection creeps by 42 percent now this is not a good aura for clan boss imagine if she would have had an aura for clan boss as well that would have been like wow but my favorite absolute champion that got released since nacret there it is raiho bone spear i cannot wait to get her on my account guys but that being said about the uh, wailing sort of situations here let's have a quick look at the epics and what sort of epics you might want to consider in keeping if you are not able to get the legendary if you are capable to get a legendary i would suggest you forget about the epics and go for the legendaries so we have fancy right this is the first champion he's the force affinity for the fusion guys attack based champion pretty good base stats 16,000 hp 1.4k attack low defense uh, not crazy speed on 97, basic crit rate, 60 crit damage. This right here is a Fire Knight Master. So for whoever might consider if a new champion for the Fire Knight, I can assure you he's going to be pretty good on the boss. So talking about the A1 requires 4 books. Hate Blades attacks 1 enemy 3 times. Each hit has a 40% chance fully booked of placing a 30% decrease speed debuff for 2 turns. So Pretty much guaranteed decrease speed on the Fire Knight because of the three hits. Pretty good, right? Then we have the A2. On two turn cooldown, fully booked, requires six books. So that brings us up to a total of ten books. Nowhere to run. Definitely nowhere to run. Attacks one enemy three times. Each hit has a 75% chance of decreasing the target's term meter by 15%. So definitely you will, you will be decreasing some term meter with this hit right here. And overall... Six hits. This is on a two turn cooldown. That's a very, very powerful uh, skill right there. And it's not necessarily only good for Fire Knight, right? I cannot remember the the next uh, affinity for the Fire Knight on stage 25, honestly, to, to tell you if this will be good there or no. I can't remember if it's magic or spirit. Then we have the A3, Killer's Bile. Five more books in here. So that brings us up to a total of 15 books. Now, book requirements are a bit, a bit high for the champion. So we have on 3 turn cooldown attacks 1 enemy 2 times, each hit places a 5% poison debuff on the target for 3 turns. Will ignore 10% of the target's defense for each poison debuff on the target. So this right here is not a bad skill, you do get a couple of poisons in there as well, 100% chance to land them, right? So on a 3 turn cooldown is not awful, considering the rest of the, the multi-hits he has from here, I would probably give him... Out of all the epics, utility-wise, I would give him an 8. Probably if would be to grade him. Just because he's, he's not a bad champion. He's not going to be game-changing. But he's not a bad champion overall. 
So that's Fanshi, the, the first champion we have on the list here, guys. Let's move over to the next one. So we're going to have one from the Demon Spawn. He does look pretty badass. Now, this is the Void champion right here. Regarding the fragments, I haven't really went into details and telling you why I would prefer that fusion. Less chickens to use, less uh, potions to use, right? So as long as they're not going to make the epic champions hard to obtain from fragments, not to put them at the level of getting a legendary as uh, the normal fusions we get from fragments i think is a better idea now you cannot fuse the epic twice even if you have the rare champions from before you guys know that the only option we had was to fuse one of them and maybe get one from a champion training event or from a summoning event right so from a couple of them we were able to get two copies if we were building all the events like that which probably is only happening for like the bigger players the people that they spend money not for a people that they don't spend so i feel like this system right here it might be better for everybody including free to play players that's my own opinion though do let me know how is the fusion going for you how hard you're gonna find it we're not 100 percent sure exactly the require about the requirements how hard it's gonna be to get every epic champion but i do want you guys to let me know in, in the future how it's working for you so we have skin first the consumed he looks pretty interesting Looks like a devilish sort of a champion, which is, of course, expected. He's from the Demon Spawn. But attack uh, attack champion, we have 13,000 HP, 1.4k attack, 1,000 defense, 102 speed, basic crit rate, uh, 60 crit damage. Looking at him, he's not going to seem too crazy, but he's not bad either. He's pretty, pretty interesting. So we have the A1. Growing Hunger requires 4 books, attacks 1 enemy 2 times. The first hit has a 35% chance, fully booked 45% chance of placing a 30% decrease speed debuff for 2 turns. The second hit has a 45% chance to decrease the target's term meter by 10%. So you can decrease a bit of term meter, decrease speed. Again, the A1 is not awful for the Fire Knight. Then we have the A2 on 3 turn cooldown fully booked. We need 6 books, brings us up to a total of 10 books again. Curse Feeder attacks all enemies, has a 100% chance of placing a 50% decrease attack debuff for 2 turns. After attacking, transfers all debuffs except stun free, sleep fear, true fear and provoke from all allies to this champion. So basically, if your teammates are, uh, are debuffed by decreased defense, decreased attack, stuff like that, he's gonna... Take all the debuffs from all your allies and bringing them up to him, okay? Now, I'm not sure the way his AI is gonna work, but the reason I'm talking about the AI is because we have the A3 on Tristan cooldown as well. Clutch of Woe transfers all debuffs from this champion to a target enemy, then attacks the target, steals 100% of the target's termiter if this attack is critical. So, this is a pretty, pretty interesting kit. Take all the debuffs from the allies, transfer them to a single target, steal all his termiter to make sure he's not getting a turn. Now, that does require accuracy, guys. It's been made clear on the previous um, post we had from Parian regarding the new mini patch hotfixes that came. Transfer debuffs requires accuracy, right? So that's four more books in here, up to 14 books in total for this champion so far. We do have the passive. Twisted heals this champion by 5% of the max HP for each debuff on them at the start of each turn. So the more debuffs he's gonna take, the more heal he's gonna get as well. If this champion is under 4 or more debuffs at the start of the turn, places a 50% increased attack buff and a 30% increased crit damage buff on this champion for 2 turns. This is pretty much same sort of situation with this passive like a Princess Garrett from the Orcs, the Orc champion legendary one that's very bad. Kind of so, sort of situation with these passives that they're just not gonna work in the game the way the game is designed to work but the champion itself is not bad is not gonna be wow game changing he might have some sort of potential but once we're done guys to read to check the other two ones we're gonna see which one is overall the best for um for utility then the next one from the sacred order guys is a force affinity as well so it seems like we're not following the typical uh for spirit magic void because i think we've seen a force champion already or i might be wrong but i think the first one was force right mordecai right the name sounds familiar guys you know all the all the history with mordecai but here he is looks pretty badass as well kind of looks like one sort of illuminati thingy but support champion this time around 
For a support champion, his HP is pretty low, 13,000 HP, 1.2k attack, 1.1k defense, 100 speed, basic on the, the rest of the stats there. But looking at him, he could be pretty game-changing for a lot of you guys out there. Now, Force Affinity, he's not going to be game-changing at this very particular moment in the game, right? But we do have the A1. Purgatory attacks one enemy, has a 45% chance of decreasing the target's termiter by 10%, has a 60% instead if the target is under a HP burn debuff. Damage based on attack, we require 5 books in here. Then we have the A2 times undoing. On 4 turn cooldown, 4 more books as well, that brings us up to a total of 9 books. Has a 100% chance of decreasing the target's termiter on all enemies by 15%. Fills the termiter of all allies by 15%. So that's kind of like a mini Lissandra skill. Increase termiter, decrease termiter. So not bad on the spider. Not bad on a lot of uh, waves to control a bit the, the enemy teams. Then we do have the A3, right? So I feel like this champion can have some sort of potential for a um, Doom Tower. Spider, for example, he's a great spider killer. Stage 19 is a bomb. He's gonna do a, an amazing, amazing job there because he's a regular affinity, right? He's not gonna be getting a lot of weak hits like a lot of other magic champions that plays HP burn. Then we have the A3 on fourth and cooldown fully booked. Four more books in here, so that brings us up to 13 books, right? We have 13 books. Has a 100% chance of placing a HP burn debuff on all enemies for two turns. Places a 50% increase attack buff on all allies for 3 turns. Now, what's good about this? This skill right here does not attack. So even if you're gonna take him on a strong affinity, for example, he's not gonna get weak hits, which means that he's still gonna land the debuff as long as his accuracy is not gonna be less than the resistance on the enemy team, or he's not gonna get a 3% chance in the game to get resisted. So that makes him an amazing champion for progression. You've seen HP burn on the new Eternal Dragon is very powerful as well. So I feel like this champion fits pretty well in, a, in the game as well. Is good for waves as well. And we have the Aura increases ally accuracy in all battles by 40. So honestly, I do find him a pretty good champion. Great for progression. Would I skip the legendary champion to get him? Probably not. Would I skip the legendary champion to get any of the previous epic champions we found so far? Probably not. Now, we do have one last champion in here, guys, which is from the Bannerlords. He kind of looks a bit like Stagnite, but he doesn't look too bad, right? He looks pretty good. He is Spirit Affinity here, guys. Defense-based champion. His in base stats are insane. 17,000 HP, 1.4k defense. Crazy, crazy defense, guys. 96 uh, speed. Basic uh, crit rate, crit damage, 45 resistance. Now, starting with the A1. Foe Breaker attacks one enemy, has a 75% chance of placing a 50% decrease attack debuff for one turn. If this would have been for two turns, would have been amazing. I would probably suggest you to run him in a counter-attack team, ally attack team. Make sure you're landing that attack down on the... AoE is for clan boss and you're fine. You don't need a uh, attack down for the stun. Damage based on defense, he requires 5 books right here. The chance of landing that attack down is pretty high. Because of it, you might want to go support on him, get Master Hexer and Sniper, increase the chance of landing it a bit more and the chance to extend it as well. Then we do have the A2. Lion's Roar. 6 more books in here, guys. So that brings us up to a total of 11 books so far on Two turns cooldown attacks all enemies, has a 75% chance to place a provoke for one turn, also places a shield buff on this champion equal to 25% of their max HP for two turns. Having AoE provoke on a two turn cooldown guys is actually huge. So this right here can be a game changer for progression, for carrying you through waves, for carrying you through the doom tower, just because you have so much CC on this skill, right? Every two turn and self, self uh, keeping alive to say like this, I can't find a word for it, but because of the shield that he puts on himself is pretty badass and super, super high defense, right? But then it's not all that this champion can do. Field of strength 
on Triton cooldown fully booked, places a 60% increased defense and a 50% increased attack buff on all allies for 2 turns. Now, if you guys remember when Drogul got released, he was the only champion to do this. And I was like, wow, game changing for clan boss if you're running defense champions and attack champions like Draco or a Fane or champions like this in a defense team. Because like this, you're kind of shooting uh, two birds with one stone. You're getting increased defense for the defense champions to deal more damage and have more survivability because that's what matters on the clan boss. And you get increased attack on champions like Draco, Fanes, uh, Vizier and champions like this to deal more damage as well. Can be pretty, pretty good. Ramp up your damage by quite a lot, by millions, honestly. And then on a 3 turn cooldown, super, super good. Then we have the passive Agotist fills this champion's terminator by 35% whenever they are attacked by an enemy under provoke or increase attack debuffs. Huge again for CC. If you get hit twice, you only land, you only gotta land two of the provokes, you're already back on 70% termiter, right from here. If you're landing three, you're on full termiter, which will bring you again to another turn. You'll be provoking the enemy team on and on and on. I'm 100% sure confident that this champion right here can solo the Ice Golem without a problem. Hands down, he's gonna solo the Ice Golem. Then we have the passive, which we talked about, but then we have the aura as well. Increases ally defense in faction creeps by 27%. Not the best aura, man. If this aura would have been overall for all, all battles, 20%, 22% would have been amazing. But even like this, an amazing champion. I feel like this might be the best champion out of all the epics, hands down. Let me know your thoughts on the comments down below, guys. Now, if you do have the chance to get a legendary champion, I would still strongly suggest you to get a legendary champion over any of the epics. It's much easier to pull an epic champion than a legendary champion, guys. Keep that in mind. That being said, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I do appreciate you all guys watching, especially the ones sitting around and watching till the end, guys. If you did enjoy the video, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, and I will see you all soon on another video. Till then, peace out.